In December of 2006, San Alfonso del Mar broke the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest pool by area. This man-made lagoon sits in Algarobo, Chile at an incredible length of 3,323 feet and covers a total area of almost 20 acres. For reference, this would be larger than 15 football fields. But how exactly does a pool of this magnitude work? With an astonishing 66 million gallons, traditional methods of filtering would simply be less than ideal and much too costly. And why exactly would a pool like this be built in the first place? After all, San Alfonso del Mar sits along the Chilean coast. So why would they build a beach on the beach? Well, to answer that question, let's take a look at a man by the name of Fernando Fishman. In 1997, Chilean biochemist Fernando Fishman began working on the tourism project that would become San Alfonso del Mar. The lagoon would sit in Algarobo, a small town on Chile's central coast. Here along the Pacific, the waters are cold and notorious for their rough tides and strong rift currents. In fact, swimming is even prohibited in the area. Fishman envisioned a large lagoon which would hold warm, crystal clear water for visitors to swim, play water sports, or even boat in. He began traveling the world in search of such technology to make his dream a reality. But sadly on his extensive search, Fishman would soon find that the technology did not exist. The only option at the time would be to construct a conventional swimming pool, but at the scale of 66 million gallons, this would prove to be a challenge. Yeah. So let's take a look at how the average backyard swimming pool filters its water. This will come in handy in helping us understand the dilemma that Fishman was faced with. Keep in mind at the time of designing San Alfonso del Mar, even though the technology was on a much larger scale, it would have been the best available option. Here in front of me, I have a sand filter system, which is commonly used on the average backyard swimming pool. And what I'd like to do is show you how this filter system works and how it filters the water in a swimming pool. When we come to a sand filter tank, we normally have sand in here. The water is then being pulled from the pool through your skimmer or your drain, comes up through the pump, and as the water travels through the plumbing, it then goes into the filter and then the water comes out and as it goes through the sand, it's filtering the water and then the water is going back through your laterals, allowing the water to go through, but not the sand. And the water travels back through, goes back up through your multiport and then returns back to the pool by means of the return line. And the return line is a pressure line, and that's why you see the jets on the side of a pool. Those are your returns, and that's what's circulating the clean water back into the pool. Now, the average backyard swimming pool is about 14 to 15,000 gallons. And to put that in perspective, it's roughly 4,500 times smaller than the San Alfonso del Mar. And at that scale, not only would you have to build a pool 4,500 times bigger, you would need 4,500 systems like I just showed you, and you would need 4,500 doses of chlorine. Well, Fishman knew that this was not feasible, so he then put his biochemistry skills to the test, and what he came up with was brilliant. After a long six years of research and development, his solution would result in a worldwide patent forming a new company called Crystal Lagoons Technology. This technology does not add chemicals at a constant rate, but rather uses a total of 400 sensors per acre to monitor the pool. When the bacteria and the algae levels surpass a certain threshold deemed too high, the system will inject chemicals to treat the water. Because of the efficiency in the way the chemicals are applied, the pool actually uses 100 times less chlorine than a typical system used for drinking water. Ultrasonic pulses then cause the algae to cluster together, making the filtering process much more efficient. 
To keep the water circulating, the resort uses computer-controlled pumps and flanges and a filtration system to pump the water from the ocean at one end of the pool and then returning the water back to the ocean at the other end of the pool a half a mile down. With this groundbreaking discovery, Fishman knew that the technology could be used for treating large bodies of water in other industries as well, one of which he explained could be used in the cooling of power plants. After nearly five years of construction, San Alfonso del Mar was completed with an estimated cost of around $2 billion. With Fishman's Crystal Lagoons technology, the pool offers crystal clear blue waters with an average temperature in the summer of 78 degrees Fahrenheit. The pool ranges from knee-high waters all the way to a 115-foot deep lagoon in which swimmers can rent scuba gear. The pool is also big enough for sailing, kayaking, and just about any other water sport imaginable. If that wasn't enough, the resort also contains South America's only roof beach. This beach is housed inside of a glass pyramid structure that is equipped with temperate water and even heated sand, which is perfect for those rainy days. All of this is estimated to cost the resort around $4 million annually in maintenance costs, but none of this would be possible if it wasn't for innovations of Crystal Lagoon Technologies. And since its completion, the technology created by Fishman has been patented worldwide and has found its way into 190 countries. The San Alfonso del Mar's record-breaking technology has paved the way for other pools of its kind to be built around the world. In fact, the largest man-made body of water today, City Stars, Sham El Sheikh, located in Egypt, also uses Crystal Lagoon's technology. But that will have to be a video for another day. So leave a comment down below and let us know if you've been to San Alfonso del Mar and what your thoughts were. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for future content. As always, I appreciate you watching. My name is Mark, and I'll see you on the next video.